We're gonna make a little gnome. He's a pretty simple gnome. It's basically a body, a hat, a nose, a beard, but you can't just stick it all together. Like there's a few things that we wanna do um, and we wanna do them in the right order to make him as successful as possible. I'm still working on this one. I wanna get all the little fingerprints out and smooth out any imperfections. Um, another thing that I had to do was make sure that this gnome is hollow on the inside because something that is this thick would never fire correctly in the kiln. It won't dry out right. Uh, through the drying process, it would probably crack. So to get started, I'm gonna take my clay out of the bag. <clears throat> quite a large chunk. I've already taken a little bit off of it. I'm going to take a little bit more. Um, I want to cut, I don't want to cut off skinny little strips. I want to go in a fair amount. It's better for me to cut off a good, this is about an inch and a half, okay, or you know, compare it to my thumb. Um, cut off a decent sized chunk. Okay, at least two thumbs thick. Um, and then I'm not gonna need all of this, so I'll probably take half of it for now because I want some sort of either cube or rectangular prism to start with. I don't wanna start with skinny little slabs. I will wrap up and put away the clay I'm not using. And then this one, that is more of a rectangular prism, I can pat it on the table, but so I don't shake my camera, I'm just gonna use my palm. Otherwise, normally I would cube it up on the table. All right, I need to cut off a little bit of this. So I need a little extra. It's nice to have a paper towel around. My was getting kind of dirty. I'll cut off a small amount. I'm gonna make my uh, nose, my beard, and not an entire hat. So I don't need that much. <clears throat> but I'm gonna set this aside for now. And actually, I'll put that back in my bag so it doesn't dry out. And then this is starting off as a cube. I'm going to make it more of like a teardrop shape. So I want it to get longer at one end and then be nice and round at the other end. So to get this to be more pointed, I can just gently tap it around it a very gentle squeeze. I don't want to squeeze too fast because then we end up with problems of breaking. Clay kind of has a memory so it likes to be like it wants to move slowly. It's slightly pyramid like only it's more of an organic form. It's more rounded because what I'm going for is this kind of chubby body on the bottom and then have it come up to a point. So I'm actually making the gnome and the hat all at one time. <clears throat> it's a little bit of a trick because it looks like this is two separate pieces. It looks like this is a separate hat and this is a separate body, but actually it's not. If you put a big piece on top of another piece, you can problem have problems with air pockets. So this is just an illusion, it's a trick. Um, it's actually just a piece of clay wrapped around the outside that I smoothed in, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, I'm going to do more smoothing and making this really dent-free as I go. I'm just trying to get it 
started for now. Tap out the bottom a little bit so it can sit nicely. <clears throat> All right, I want the hat to take up a fair amount of the sculpture. The body is just very short. So the first thing I wanna kinda of do is decide where do I want the face, what side will work best. Okay, I think I'm gonna put the face right here. So I'm gonna make a little mark because the hat would be there. So that means the nose is going to go right about there. Um, I like to put the nose on first and then do the edge of the hat. So I have a little bit of this clay left over that I cut off. I don't need too much to make a nose. A fairly decent gnome nose. I just gotta decide what shape I want it to be. It'd be fairly round, but I do want it to slant. I want the end of it to be bigger than the top. So I'm gonna gently push that down. I'm not trying to attach it because I'm actually going to have to use some slip to attach it. I'm just trying to kind of form it and get the overall shape. I do want the end of this to be a little more rounded. All right, to attach this piece on, I'm gonna do the score, slip, and weld technique. So having a fork, having my slip that I made, this little stir. Yeah, this is broken down really nicely. It's a little thick, I could stir that up a bit more. Um, but what I want to do is attach this by doing some little score marks with my fork and then on the back side of the nose I'm going to do some score marks or scratching lines and that helps it go together better. Um, I do need a little bit of slip though. Just use my finger or use the end of a tool. Keep my fingers a little cleaner for a little longer. And I've got slip, I've scored. I'm gonna kind of wiggle those two pieces together. And then weld them around with either the back of my fingernail or the end of my butter knife. I want them to stay together. It is important to do all three, score, slip, and this welding process. I don't want to add any more moisture, so looks like his nose is dripping a little bit. I don't want that on there. Uh, dry it up. It's better to have a dry weld than a wet weld. Okay, I can do more shaping of this nose, give it more personality later on, maybe some nostrils, do a little carving on it, but for now, it's good enough. I'm going to add the hat. Now the hat, I want it to kind of droop down over the eyes, um, and all this is is a, a coil that's wrapped all the way around. It's very tricky. Um, so I'm going to roll out coil. <clears throat> when I roll coils out, I use both hands and I don't twist in opposite directions. I always go in the same direction. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be fairly thin. Even if it's in a couple of different parts, that doesn't really matter. Actually, I'll break mine just in case your coil isn't long enough. You have a broken one. No big deal. All right, we're gonna figure out where it goes. I am going to start in the front. I'm gonna go right on top of that nose and then bring it down on both sides so that it has that drooping hat effect. Okay. And then on the back side, I have a gap. So I'll cut just a teeny bit more than I need. That will be for the back part. Okay. If your clay has started to dry out at all, we would want to do a little score 
and slip on this coil too. Mine is still fairly wet, so I'd be confident not working on this step quite as diligently as I normally would. It's a little scoring, a little slip. Gently lift this up. I'll use the slip right along the clay. Really careful when I score on this coil because I don't want it to rip. All right, a bit more slip. Okay, I've slip, I've scored. Oh, I gently lay it down. Okay, so this is the trick. Um, you want the underside to be fairly smooth and you want it to blend up to look like it's a fully formed hat. You don't want a little ridge on it. <clears throat> so, with my finger, well, I don't wanna push this too hard. Actually, let's start with the back of my fingernail and weld going in an upward direction just to get this a little bit more formed. Just gently pushing this up a little bit at a time. This clay is still really wet. I'm not gonna do the backside on camera, but I do the same thing. Add another little bit more cord and smooth up. And then you just try to get them to blend together. So using the end of a chopstick or using my finger very gently, really, really gently, I'm barely pressing. I'm just trying to get this incorporated so it looks more like one piece. I probably could have made this coil just a tiny bit bigger, but the last one I did, I felt like the coil was too big. So this one, I had to blend up a lot more. Um, that one, I could have done a little bit bigger, so. After you make one or two, you start to get pretty good at it. Um, it's been quite a while since I've made gnomes, though. One year I made a whole big series of them as Christmas gifts. I think I made like 10 of them. They were really little. They were even smaller than this. They were just a couple inches tall, two inches at the most. Okay, so we've got that blended in. Um, the next step is going to be getting this hollow. I want to make it hollow before I do much else. So I'm just going to go in the bottom, use my index finger, and be gentle that I don't smash this all up, but I want to get the inside hollowed out. And this does make him just a little chubbier. I like that. He's so cute. Okay, so I can tell how far my finger has gone up into there, so it's hollowed out a good portion of it. Right? You could close this back up, but you wouldn't want to close it completely. Um, you'd want to leave a little opening so air can escape during the firing process. Um, I just like to bring it back in a little bit because I stretched it out. Not so much to close it up, but just for the shape. So I don't need to close this up since that's sitting on the bottom. All right. Next, we can gently form the tip of the hat. And work on smoothing it a little bit. The last steps will be putting on some beard pieces, which you can't slap on the whole piece all at one time. Um, because it has a tendency to crack off. So I'll show you how to do that. Just like there was a trick with the edge of this hat, there's a trick with the beard too. 